Is the Redrix Broadsword worth the grind? Is it worth putting in all that time to attain what some people in this community call an average weapon? Before I answer the question in depth, I want you to take a minute to look at the background footage of all the carnage and destruction that my Redrix Claymore causes. Now, to answer this question in depth, first and foremost, we should not be praising removal of a skill-based reward like the Redrix Claymore in exchange for a time-based reward like the Redrix Broadsword. But here's the thing, if you were one of the best players in all of Destiny and played in the competitive playlist, it would take you roughly 105 games minimum for the Claymore assuming you won pretty much every single game. Now however, for us mortals, it's going to take about double that. 210 games, that's 70 to 90s hours worth of uh, playtime, with a 50% win ratio not accounting for win streaks. So that's like winning a game, then losing a game, then winning a game, then losing a game till the end of time. Now if you chart that out over the course of an entire season, that's about a 6 hour commitment per week with the worst possible odds to a guaranteed claymore by the end of the season. Now keep in mind, it'll be much shorter with weekly bonuses and streaks. And in the grand scheme of things, I believe that my disconnects and DDoSs were equalized by free wins. And you get these because sometimes when somebody queues up, their fire team disbands and you end up getting a free win. Now recently I picked up console, I got back on PS4 and started to grind a claymore from scratch. I played about 7 hours and got 800 points with my pickup team. So at this rate, I can have a claymore in about 18 hours starting from scratch. But the broadsword on the other hand, I estimate this will take about 50 hours commitment for a good player, and cheating slash boosting will exist, but this grind is passive. It's what I call zero time, because I'll be playing PvP every day anyway, the tasks are easy and mundane, and I will eventually complete them without actually trying to complete them. For those of you unaware of what it takes to receive a Redrix Broadsword in Season 4, you can either get a Claymore now in Season 3, or do every step in this quest, which is Step 1. Defeat 200 opponents with Pulse Rifle Final Blows. Step 2. Reach Valor Rank Heroic. Step 3. Earn 75 Double Plays. Step 4. Defeat 150 opponents with Precision Final Blows from any Pulse Rifle. Step number 5. Defeat 50 opponents with Arc, Solar, and Void Final Blows that's separate. Step number 6, complete 25 matches in Quick Play, Competitive, and Rumble, also separate. Step number 7, 20 Crucible Bounties. Step number 8, reset your Valor rank 5 times within a single season. Keep in mind you'll be doing this 2 or 3 times just completing the other steps. And finally, step 9, go to Lord Shax and claim your Redrix Broadsword. But now the ultimate question, is the gun worth the grind? It sports a 1.07 TTK, that's time to kill, in current Season 3 Crucible. And while that may sound average to those uninformed, the precision ratio of the gun is super forgiving on top of it. It takes 7 precision shots, so that's 2 and a third burst to kill. But if you add one more bullet, so that's 8 shots, 2 and 2 thirds burst, that's a precision ratio of 5 headshots and 3 body shots, and your TTK is still better than a hand cannon. But let's say for argument's sake that you don't have the best shot. Well, then you can 3 burst your target with 1 headshot burst and 2 body shot burst while still remaining competitive with a hand cannon TTK. Hand cannon's only going to do slightly better, but again, you don't have to aim for the head as much. So comparing apples to oranges with a hand cannon, a hand cannon does one single bullet of damage, a pulse rifle does a whole burst. So you do have to commit 3 bullets instead of 1, but those 3 bullets are in quick succession, so it's almost like having 1 bullet if you can just moderately aim well. And here's where the best part of the Claymore archetype comes into play. If somebody peeks for just an instance, you will do more damage to them than they will do to you. So your peek shot potential is better. 
and in terms of range, the drop-off model of High Impact Pulses is similar to that of Mida Multi-Tool, a scout rifle, and has about a 10 to 20 meter advantage on other arc types of pulses. Now if you also consider that the Redrix Claymore also has ballistics instead of a scope, which improves its recoil, on top of the advantage that it already has on recoil when compared to other pulse archetypes, you can see why I like the gun. But now let's compare the Claymore and the Broadsword to other high impact pulses, because without Desperado active, you might as well just have a normal pulse rifle. For those of you who don't know, you activate Desperado by activating Outlaw and then reloading. That's the specialty of Redrick's Claymore slash Broadsword. But now let's look at some other pulses. Let's take the Trials High Impact Pulse, Relentless, and the Einstein D, which is either from the Gunsmith or the EDZ, I forget. But anyway, Relentless has Headseeker, Einstein D has a High Impact Reserves. I was about to say Glass Half Bull, but essentially the bottom half of the magazine does more damage, allowing you to be less precise. And because of ricochet rounds, it has the best in class range. But now looking at Relentless, Relentless has Ballistics, which helps the recoil, and Headseeker to require even less precision for a kill and Snapshot to make up for poor handling. But now let's compare Graviton Lance, which is the best of everything, except for the fact that it's an exotic and Claymore Broadsword is a legendary. So if you use Graviton Lance, you can't simultaneously use Risk Runner or Fighting Lion or any new awesome exotic that comes out in the Forsaken. Finally, looking at Vigilance Wing, V-Wing obviously has a vastly superior TTK, with the caveat of a high precision ratio, more burst commitment because it's 5 instead of 3 bullets, it has short range, but here's the cool thing. It's mostly body shot TTK is still superior to most weapons. After explaining this, you may think to yourself, well, it's official. Regix Claymore slash Broadsword is overrated and is garbage. And you may be right to think that, but at least hear me out for the rest of the video. In Season 4, that's the Forsaken, random rolls will exist that may add new perks to high impact pulses. If Kill Clip exists, it's speculated that a high impact pulse will hit upwards of 45 damage to the head. But the funny thing is regardless of a TTK change, a Kill Clip high impact will kill in 5 shots in both Season 3 balancing, that's current balancing, and in Season 4 balancing, Forsaken. So to recap, the same shots to kill despite the damage changing. I know, blows my mind too. Of course in the Forsaken, you have to hit less headshots, but we're talking about a perk that exists to reduce your TTK, Kill Clip does not do it. And it won't help you out of range either, because the aim assist drop off is sooner than the damage drop off. So now let's theorycraft, since random rolls exist. What is the god roll high impact pulse? Well I would say a low zoom sight with head seeker, steady rounds, and one of these three perks, moving target, snapshot, or quick draw. This roll makes it easily possible to hit the optimal TTK. The only comparable fixed roll that exists is Relentless, but in Season 4, you might be able to get a similar gun with an additional middle perk for stability that adds to the overall consistency of the weapon. Now ultimately, you are trading optimal TTK consistency on an already very forgiving archetype for the potential to abuse Desperado if you're choosing the Claymore or the Broadsword over this new better version of Relentless that might exist in Season 4. Desperado is superior to Kill Clip or any other perk that you can get for three reasons. Number one, you have more control over when to activate the perk. Oftentimes you can carry Desperado to the other side of the map. Two, Spam Fire actually kills faster than Kill Clip, so it's a TTK reduction and it's more forgiving. And finally, number three, you can empty two entire magazines of spam fire with only one outlaw proc. Incredible. Now here's the part of the video that slightly grinds my gears. So the broadsword will do everything that the claymore will do, but better, because the broadsword will have an additional perk, a new mod system, and access to more favorable ballistics. Imagine ricochet rounds. Imagine high caliber rounds. Imagine anything you want down the middle. Broadsword might have it. Now, a case can be made for PvP that Relentless and a Shotgun will pair extremely well, but in PvE, the Redrix will be a strong option, and in Gambit, it will be arguably one of the best. Now consider this. 
I've spent so much time grinding for strikes for a Risk Runner Catalyst, a lot more time than I did in obtaining my Claymore. The strike AI is predictable. Strikes for me eventually become mindless and somewhat boring. The competitive playlist, on the other hand, gradually gets more difficult as you progress. Each match will require more effort. It rarely becomes boring to me, even though I attest that the PvP balancing for Season 3 was definitely a drag. The bottom line is that the Claymore is a guaranteed reward that keeps my interest, whereas Risk Runner is random and a monotonous grind. If you get the Risk Runner Catalyst, you can make orbs and be more effective at a range, but you'll be the exact same player you were before obtaining it. Now if you get a Claymore on the other hand, you can make orbs and delete people from existence with Desperado if you proc it, you'll be a much better PvP player from going through the process of obtaining the Claymore, which will consequently make you more effective with the weapon you work so hard to get. So the real reward is fundamentally awesome PvP skill that you built that translates to all facets of the game. In my opinion, the Redrix is worth the grind. But before I get ahead of myself, let's not forget those poor souls that grinded throughout the entire season tried their best to put together a team, they tried the solo queue, they won a couple games, lost a couple games, won one, lost one, lost five, won two, lost two, won one. You understand what I'm getting at. It was a bumpy season, ups and down. They got DDoS, they had to deal with worm husk hunters at every corner. But they prevailed. They eventually earned their Redrix Claymore. I want you to put yourself in their shoes for a second. Imagine grinding that hard, going through all that bullshit under the guise that if you played well this season, you would have the Redrix Claymore, a reward which you can never obtain again and will forever be a trophy, a very, very powerful trophy weapon. Imagine putting your blood, sweat, and tears into obtaining the Redrix Claymore, a supposed exclusive weapon, to later find out that in the Forsaken, a stronger, easier to get version will exist. That would be a very shitty situation. It is a shitty situation, but I side with Bungie on this decision because it goes without saying, making a video game is really time consuming, really expensive, and you get shit for it no matter what decision you actually make. So it seemed like Bungie bet the farm in regards to Destiny 2 launch and the state of PvP balancing. It didn't resonate with the community, long story short. So of course, Bungie had to naturally make changes. But making changes isn't, e isn't as easy as flipping a switch. No, this takes time. And so when the Claymore was announced as a trophy weapon, the Forsaken changes might not have even been considered or realistic, etc. So now just recently, seeing the overwhelming support of the Destiny community in favor of the Forsaken changes, it seems unfair to lock out such a powerful weapon like the Redrix Claymore Broadsword because the people who are returning with the Forsaken had no intention of ever touching Destiny again because the future was so volatile. So could you blame them for not attempting to get a Claymore in Season 3 competitive? I don't blame them whatsoever, and I do think that they should have a fair shake at obtaining the Claymore, or Broadsword in this instance. And for those of you that are pissed off, and rightfully so, pissed off at the fact that you grinded for a Claymore just to have it essentially given away, I feel you, but just know that you permanently now have a trophy. You unlock the Claymore in the midst of the most difficult playlist that will ever exist in the history of Destiny, probably ever, and you should be proud of that. You should be very proud of that, because if you see any other person using a broadsword, what's going to come to mind is just simply, hey, he's using an Outlaw Desperado Pulse. But if you see a Redrix Claymore, you think, holy shit, that guy grinded through Season 3 Crucible to obtain that weapon. And even scarier, what if you see a Redrix Claymore with the ornament? After the Virgin Alert shock wears off, you'll realize that that player grinded through Season 3 Crucible all the way to max rank. And if they can do that, oh, they can easily hang in Forsaken and should be a formidable foe. At the end of the day, rest happily knowing that you have something that 99% of the Destiny population does not have. And it's not the Claymore, it's credibility. If you ever want to join a PvP group, a raid group, whatever, you'd be hard pressed to find a group that won't allow you to join if you have a legitimate 
Redrick's Claymore, and even better, an ornament. And looking at the glass half full, if you've unlocked the Redrick's Claymore in Season 3, it should be a walk in the park to unlock whatever Crucible competitive reward exists in the Forsaken. Good luck. For those of you wondering, it is not too late to unlock a Retrix Claymore. You just have to dedicate a lot of time and effort starting now. And I've decided that I want to attempt it again, this time on console. So I don't see that annoying little comment that always says, Right, so you got it on PC, but I'd love to see you try that shit on console. Okay, so I'm trying it on console. That is twitch.tv slash camicakes. I'll be playing at night, PS4, non-stop and competitive. I'm gonna get the Claymore, no doubt. But will I go to max rank? Find out in the next episode of Dragon Ball Z.